You can think of this as the successor to last year's Wildtrak X. It's called the Tremor. Uh, the main difference is it's based on the Ranger Sport instead of the Wildtrak, obviously. So that means it comes with all of the black or dark grey highlights, but it still comes with the hardcore Bilstein suspension, the kind of wide body uh, profile here with the, the guards that stick out a little bit. There's also a tow bar. Uh, no cover over the tray area or bed in this example. Uh, no dampers on the tailgate either, but it doesn't, it doesn't really slam down that quickly because they've worked on the geometry of the hinge to make it seem like it's, it just feels lighter than what it is. It's actually really easy to pick up with one hand. But yeah, no cover, like tonneau cover or electric uh, roller shutter or anything like that. But you still get these adjustable hooks that you can slide along and a power socket. Like with the Wildtrak X, this is only available with the two litre bi-turbo diesel four cylinder engine. I'm not sure why Ford does not want to offer the V6. I mean, it's got it there, it fits in there, it's ready to go. Um, I feel like they're trying to move more of these four cylinders than the V6. But yeah, I just think it would be just a nice option. Not that this is a uh, you know far superior engine to the V6. The V6 is more of a, a replacement to the old 3.25 cylinder in my opinion. It does offer heaps more torque though. So 600 Newton meters compared with this is 500 Newton meters and a bit more power, 184 kilowatts. This is 154 kilowatts, but you do have extra weight to, to lug around. So the performance of time 0 to 100 in around a second quicker or a second and a half quicker in the V6 compared with the four cylinder. Um, but it depends on the variant as well, because each variant is obviously a little bit heavier or lighter depending on what it is. And then inside you get these Tremor uh, logos on the seats. Nice thick rubber floor mats, and that's pretty much it. It's, it's basically the sport variant. But yeah, then down below you've got those different drive modes, including a 4A mode. So that means you can actually drive this on the tarmac with four wheel drive, which is very unique. Uh, the, uh, the Triton, I keep saying the Pajero Sport, the Triton, uh, you can do that. You can put it in four-wheel drive and drive on the road. That's fine. And then that's pretty much it. Apart from GWM models that have full-time four-wheel drive, um, I think that's about it. Which makes this a bit more unique compared with the other ranges, at least. Uh, the V6 models offer the same um, 4A mode as well. For this test, I'm just going to stick to the off-road stuff. I was hoping to do our nice little loop here, but they've done a lot of ro uh, works here at the forest. So it's all just flattened out, so it's not a challenge at all. Um, but we will hit the little jump down there to see how that Bilstein suspension handles. And then I'll go for a drive and just see if I can do a bit of exploring and just see if I can find anywhere that's a bit more of a challenge. But I've been down here quite a few times. There's nothing really that challenging except for over the other side where there was that steep climb and it was all kind of eroded away. It kind of was, it was a bit of a challenge, whereas that's all smoothed out now. I'll do a lap around here anyway, just so you can see, but yes, it's pretty much, you could drive around a, uh, a station wagon with no problem. The reason I'm not doing any on-road stuff with this one is because we've done heaps of the ranges in the last sort of 12 months. And this is basically the same as, as most of the other ones. And my sort of ev evaluation carries over from all of them as well. I think the Ranger is probably one of the best handling utes in this class, uh, apart from the Amarok, which is based on the same, uh, same platform. I know the ute segment you know, doesn't have a high bar for on-road handling, but if you are after a, a sort of lifestyle, recreational style of 4x4 ute, the Ranger is good because it's comfortable, you can drive on the road, you don't have to worry about you know, taking on a mountain road to a, you know, a camping site or something like that and be worried about you know, body roll and just being extra careful. This, you can pretty much drive it like an SUV and it handles really well. The, the front end stays very flat doesn't dip down, there's no yeah, excess body roll, the steering feels nice, and because you sit sort of down in the cabin, you don't have that sort of top heavy feeling as you're driving along, it's sort of, yeah, you just hunker down a little bit. I'll just leave it in two wheel drive for most of this, um, but we'll flick it over. Actually, we'll put it into 4A, and you can do that while you're driving, and you get a little symbol up there saying 4A, and then you just know you've got the security of four wheel drive if you hit a, a slippery spot or something like that. You don't have to worry about quickly putting it into uh, to four-wheel drive. It's just already ready to go. Yeah, firstly, that suspension is, is really good. It's, as you'd expect, it's proper Bilstein aftermarket style of suspension. Um, hopefully, it's not too dark for the camera, but 
But yeah, over these bumps, it just irons over them beautifully. It's still like jiggling a little bit at the back, as you'd expect. It is a heavy duty sort of workhorse at the end of the day, but yeah, much less jiggling than many of the rivals. That's what I mean by if you want to use this as more of a recreational style of vehicle. So good for family duties, um, going away on camping trips and so on, but you still have that capability. Still three and a half ton towing capacity, still a good GCM um, and pay leftover payload when you subtract the max towing. Um, it still has all of that, but with the Bilstein suspension and the big chunky tires, I suppose, they provide a bit, bit of absorption as well. Um, it just means that it's comfortable. You, your family's not gonna be whinging that they're bouncing around everywhere. See, along here, it's just all completely flat and just smoothed out. I mean, it's still sort of rippled and a bit bumpy, but you could drive a, uh, a sedan down here, no problem. We still have the little creek crossing down the bottom, so we haven't had much rain lately, but uh, if we did, that would still fill up. So we'll come back, you know, in a few few, uh, few weeks or whatever with the next four-wheel drive and just see how it is. But yeah, that's completely dry through there now. And then up this hill, it is still quite steep, even though it might not look like it on camera, but it's completely smoothed over pretty much. And yeah, this has no problem gripping with those chunky tires. There's still a bit of a dip at the top here or a little mound that you've got to get over. And there's a ditch just here as well, which I'll just go straight through. And no problem whatsoever. And then all of this is pretty much just smooth, except they've put a bit of a gravel trap here or gravel pits just to catch some of the water because it was always very boggy through here. If you look at some of our um, previous videos, you'll see that that was a mud pit before. But yeah, this is all very simple stuff. Unfortunately, everywhere is either flat or closed. But anyway, this is pretty much the same as the Wildtrak X, so you could expect the same sort of off-road performance, excellent ground clearance and approach and departure angles, um, and then those big grippy tires, those big chunky tires as well. See, over here we've got a little road, it's closed off, so there's no entry. Now, being all the way down that end, and all, there's, all that's down there is the sun, and then back up here, it's all, every road that's down the side is just closed off. So unfortunately I can't do a proper off-road test, but on dirt roads like this, that Bilstein suspension is really good. It's not jiggling about as much as other dual cab utes like this, um, especially with no weight in the back. And that road's closed off as well. Um, so yeah, it is definitely worth it for the extra comfort um it doesn't bounce around as much nowhere near as much as most of the you know regular rivals i'll uh, i'll try a different area next time or wait for them to reopen some of these these side roads actually we can go off this little jump let's hit it with a bit of speed <laughs> that's beautiful my phone actually jumped out of the uh the cup holders there but the ride, the comfort was absolutely perfect. It just glided up and then just landed beautifully back down again. Very nice. As you'd expect with pretty serious Bilstein suspension. All right, let's head out now to the private road and do some performance testing and see what it goes like.